Since last episode, the gang has gotten to a ton of different jobs. We're getting to the point of the build where tasks are much faster than finishing the siding or trimming the interior. Most of these tasks are only one to two days long now. This episode, I chose to focus on the final grade, growing grass, building the kitchen, installing the floors, and finishing the main stairs. We can really see the end of this project now. Let's build a house. One of the final exterior tasks we have is completing the final grade. For almost two years now, our property has been a mud pile mess. We hired an excavator to come in and ensure our yard is pitched properly to shed water away from the house and decrease the opportunity for puddles and low points throughout my future yard. Our excavator does this by back dragging at a consistent rate from the high point near the house. The property looks and feels better with every pass he takes. Once the property was graded, we brought in a couple truckloads of quality topsoil to spread throughout the property. This topsoil will create a fertile landscape for the grass seed. As our excavator spread the new soil, Smitty, Drew, and I went out and raked the topsoil. We want the soil to look and feel like a manicured infield before we seed. With our topsoil prepared, I called a local landscaping company to apply what's called hydro seed. Hydro seeding is the process of combining a mixture called a slurry, which is a cocktail of seed, mulch, fertilizer, soil amendments, and water. This slurry is applied from a hydro seeder tank and applied to the intended surface using high pressure. The hydro seeder keeps the slurry evenly mixed and evenly spread throughout the yard. I've never seen hydro seed applied, but it's a pretty affordable way to seed your lawn. I was interested to see how it would work out. Well, we hit a little bit of bad luck. We spread the hydro seed right at the beginning of a three week heat wave with zero rain. Nothing you can do but work towards a solution. So Amy and I grabbed some sprinklers and some hay and made it rain ourselves. All in all, this product and the hydro seed turned out great. In a month's time, we officially have a yard. With our final grade complete and our grass coming in strong, we got word that the kitchen cabinets are finally being delivered. What we're going for is a dark navy kitchen with gold hardware, an island with quartz countertops, a farmhouse sink, and floating shelves made out of ash hardwood. 
The only thing we haven't picked out yet is the backsplash, but we're planning on keeping it a simple white square tile. To start the kitchen, we identified where all the studs were and then immediately started installing all the cabinets into place. We took an unconventional route to build the island. We fastened the cabinets together, installed the farm sink, but we installed the entire island on top of a platform with wheels. Smitty came up with this idea because we have yet to install the ash floors and it's easier to move the island this way. This is one of the biggest moments of the build for me. It's time to install the ash flooring that Smitty and I milled over the winter while we were waiting for a permit. If you remember back in episode 4, we milled ash for the floors and a bunch of poplar for the window and door jams. Unloading this in the house feels almost surreal. Alright, it's all loaded in here. We got random width, random length. Looks awesome. This is pre-sanded and everything too. And we're gonna keep it in here for a while so that way it climatizes to the house. So when we install it, it's ready to go. Pretty awesome. From the saw mill to the house. With the kitchen island out of the way, it was time to start installing the tongue and groove flooring. Another great part of the flooring story is a friend of Smitty's is ex-army from the 82nd Airborne and he decided to call Smitty and install the flooring free of charge. The project continues to blow me away with the amount of people that are just willing to show up. After the floors were installed, it was time to sand them in place. This really creates an even and smooth floor. decision with the floors was the finish that we wanted to put on it. It was actually a pretty challenging decision. We went back and forth from dark colors to mid-level colors and whitewashes. But Amy wanted to stay as natural toned as possible, so we decided to go with a whitewash stain. The floors came out way better than I ever imagined. This was one of the first times I got choked up walking into the house. All that time and stress milling the logs was unbelievably worth it. Finishing the floors is a significant milestone because of how much work we put into milling them and how great they turned out. But having the floors completed also allows us to finish the kitchen and the stairs. To build the stairs, Drew and I teamed up on the volume work while Smitty took care of the craftsman portion of the stairs. The first move was installing the treads. Replacing the old plywood stairs was extremely satisfying. Next, Drew and I installed the riser boards. Working through these stairs, Drew and I kind of recognized how much tool and hand skills we had developed through the summer of finishes. 
being able to work together as a team with minimal mistakes and a focus on attention to detail really pushed this STAIR project along. While Drew and I were working on the risers, Smitty did his thing on the newel posts, the handrails, and the always impressive skirt boards. It doesn't take long for Smitty to show you how much you actually don't know. The last portion of the stairs was to install the balusters. To do this, I marked out where each baluster had to go on the treads and then lasered up and marked the railings. After I drilled the holes, I placed the baluster in its position and fastened the knuckles at the top and the bottom of the baluster for a nice modern look on the stairs. Finishing the stairs completely elevated the look and feel of the house. Walking in the front door, the stairs are kind of the first impression of the house. We're so happy with how they turned out. To finish off the major portion of the kitchen, we needed to add a couple hands. We have a double oven we have to install, and we also took time to build a platform for the island. With Amy and I both being taller and having a deep farm sink, we wanted to be able to do the dishes comfortably and gather at the island at bar top height. The only thing is, that creates another six inches of height we have to lift this mammoth piece of quartz. To do this, we brought some muscle. Good friends of ours own a custom countertop company and they jumped right on the opportunity to help us out. It took every bit of seven guys to get this thing up. All the financial stress and sweat evaporates when you get a finished product like this. We're so close to calling this place home. Let's build a house. Next time on Let's Build a House. with my face